This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Omega. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, who I just listened to on the latest Thes... No. I was about to save you my show's name for your <laughs> show's name. What the fuck is wrong with me? Uh, although although your show is a spinoff of mine, so, you know. That's, that is true. <laughs> yeah, some people, some, a, a fact some people don't don't realize or think about. I think you guys mentioned it once on Lesbian Talk. But, and in, a lot in the comments, too, because people are like, how dare you use the word lesbian in your name? Like, no, it's a joke. See, because never mind. <laughs> yes. I, and hey, you know what? I do appreciate it. And every every mention and every link that goes back here to this show and to the site and everything is much appreciated. <clears throat> we need more people to watch and listen. We so always do. Yes, we need that. We have a guest this week <laughs> to continue on the uh, site newbie guests that we've been having on. Uh, we have Zach Lawrence here, the host of the uh, Indie Christian Reviews. Hello. Hello. Yes, and uh, for those of us, for, well, those of us, I say, those people out there who have no idea who you are and, and what you do beyond what they can glean from your uh, sh series title, uh, what do, can you tell us about yourself and what you do? All right, well, I, uh, my show is Indie Christian Review. I review uh, independent Christian films, um, kind of fo primarily focusing on ones I think are actually worth watching and ones I like, because... I actually am also uh, a Christian filmmaker myself, and mm -hmm. so kind of trying to help out the rest of the team with uh, bringing to light some some of the movies that people may not realize are out there, because there are quite a lot of Christian films out there. Some good, some not so great. But I try to find the uh, the ones I like, except for End Times movies, which I detest with a passion. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've I've seen like... my wife loves them, so I feel, I feel you, man. I feel you. Yeah, I've seen like the first two Left Behind movies, and it's like eh. most of my issues with them actually came from how close how close they were, or in some cases not with the original books. Mm -hmm. And but that's just how I look at things. I, and and I've seen uh, uh, obviously Hagen's review of Left Behind, well both of them so far, and I see all those issues that she's got with them. And and yeah, I can see all those issues, and I have them too. But it's like some of those things. It's like really you went with that when the book went with this and then this like really just because like like i'll give you a perfect example uh towards the end of the first left behind movie where it links up with the book where the uh, un meeting and everything in carpathia ends up killing the two banker guys and in the book i believe he did it with one shot and in the film he did it with two that is extreme nitpicking on my part but it's like come on you you, you have movie magic you can you can find a way to do it in just one See shot that that would annoy me because I'm like, if you're the Antichrist, like, go for it. Like, you know, force lightning Emperor Palpatine people, you know, <laughs> go for it. You Live know what? The dream. That, would, that would make End Times movies a lot more interesting. People would be like, we think he's the Antichrist. He'd be like, uh, yes, actually, I am. Come here. Let me force lightning you. Yes. <laughs> Just saying. Although I will admit in the uh, second Left Behind movie with uh, the guy with the guys at the Wailing Wall, I forget their names right off the top of my head. But when the, one of them started the breathing Jews? fire, no, not the Jews. Uh, the 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 two. Uh, oh God, they the, they were like the two. Uh, oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. They're the, the, the two prophets. Guys. Yes, thank you. Um, I think I don't know if they're I don't remember if they're actually named in the movie, but in the book they were. Let's see if I remember. Uh, I think it's like Eli and Moshe, or how I think the that actually Jew, proper Jewish pronunciation of Moses, which I am horrible at pronouncing other languages. <laughs> yeah. So they were they were actual Sorry. prophets. Yeah. yeah, they're they're kind of supposed to be the the two. See, uh, yeah, they're, there you they're, go. They're two witnesses or two prophets. Um, mm -hmm. It just kind of depends on which translation you use and what eschatology you follow. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what are you doing? I'm a prophet. Come here, I'll breathe fire at you. Let's let me just tell you, yeah. that's a great benefits package. There Would you, you like to spread the word of God? You get to breathe fire. <laughs> hey, sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I will admit that. that I thought that was awesome. I don't, I don't care what anybody else says. I thought that particular bit was awesome. We need more people breathing fire. Gober like special effects. Yes, <laughs> and I will say also with, with the Left Behind books, they got they got plenty gory. I mean, like like some people 
the aftermath of them being shot or whatever with like heads being told about being like blown off and and blood and chunks just going everywhere it's like wow fucking brutal Uh. it's really funny because you know shelving at the bookstore they're all in the christian fiction section Mm -hmm. which most of it is dominated with these books by like beverly lewis or kimberly what's her face and they all show like like amish women looking pensive oh dear like i don't know why but the amish are a big are a big Christian like author women Christian authors want to write about the Amish which I guess that's cool you know the Amish need more exposure but it's really great because if we have room we'll face out something to make everything fit so you have like left behind four tribulation horror things and stuff (laughs) right next to like some Amish woman you know looking pensively off into the distance on the farm (laughs) like yeah it's a way to spice up the section because all the only other person you have is Ted Decker oh wow well he he writes Christian stuff but he he's always looked like thrillers so Ah, there's too, there's a uh, Frank Peretti who also tends to delve into the oh. spiritual horror and yeah, thriller you're stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. Is he the one that somebody wrote a book about? They tried to clone Jesus from DNA uh, from the True Cross. I didn't read it, but I remember when it came out, and everyone was like, "Wow, really?" And I was I'm, like, "Yeah." I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not too much. I'm not really a fan. I just kind of know of him. I've read yeah. one of his books. I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. I don't know if he wrote it, but I remember it came out, I want to say, maybe about eight or nine years ago. Oh, oh my god, I, I'm just remembering something I mentioned a couple of episodes back. You know, we need, like, like little little uh, pocket Jesuses, like like little chibi Jesuses to walk around. Yeah, because it was, it, was, it was just a one-off thing that I talked about, where it's like, you know, you have your own little personal Jesus, like the size of, say, like a kitten or whatever, and have them go around and do things for you, and... And that would but be, like that, a, that'd be like, kind of amazing. Like a toy? Well, it could be a toy, or or if they go with the cloning thing, you you splice it with like guinea pig DNA or whatever, or or whatever it is that <laughs> makes them smaller. For some reason, I think it's probably really bad to create a homunculus out of the savior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people that, might have a problem with that. Well, yeah, yeah, that that wouldn't go over too well. <laughs> like I thought you meant a little action figure, like a little kid would be like, "I got Jesus in my pocket." Really? Yeah, here he is, and they could pull a little action figure. Well, I, I think they already have action figures, don't they? Yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about. Then you like took it to like some <laughs> yeah. kind of dark alchemical level that I wasn't ready for. Yeah, I don't think most people were ready for that. So I don't you're not think alone. you were ready for yourself. I probably wasn't. <laughs> Speaking of things I was not ready for, Holly, God damn it! What I, did she I, do? Okay, she showed me this link on Amazon.com, and <laughs> and and it, it's it's one of these. It's one of these uh, really weird sex toys, and 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 I've got I've got it up on here, uh, not on the video screen obviously, but I've got it pulled up. But it's one of those that looks that uh, kind of looks like a woman, you know, bent over or whatever. And for one, the feet look a little too small to be a grown woman's feet, which has horrible implications already. But the product itself is not the thing; it, it's it's the product description. Oh dear. And Holly sent this link to me, and she said somebody was paid to write this. I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but there was one part that kind of flipped out to me that, that says flip her over on her ass and do her doggy style. Take that for a moment, think about it, and then realize that anatomy does not work that way. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it just doesn't work that way. Well, I mean, people who are copywriters a lot of times are just paid by the word and trying to get it through as quick as possible. Yeah, getting through as quick as possible is one thing. On the other hand, let's let's be a little bit more accurate with our product dis- description here. You know, or, <laughs> I'm or, sure or, if or, anybody has a complaint about a specific sex toy, the pro- the the, ac- the anatomical accuracy of the product description is probably not first on their list. I mean, I'm just saying. Probably not, but then I'm I'm the one who will sit there and I will call out article writers for lack of editing or bad editing. So you know, <laughs> <sighs> it's just wow. But um, but if you if if you guys out there really want to look at it, it's uh on a, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, Pipe Dream Extreme Flip and Fuck Me. That's the actual name of the product. If you want to go for it, and I'm just realizing that not safe for work. Well, no. Well, the entire show's not safe for work. What are you talking about? <laughs> we say fuck. Well, I'm me. telling. I'm telling people in case they're like, "Gee, I'm at work. I think I'll listen to a nice, relaxing podcast while I do my data entry." Yeah, there you go. And they're like, 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, obviously, don't look up the product while you're at work. I mean, I mean, the name alone should should signify, yeah, you don't want to do this. Do you do you think? Yeah, I think. Yeah, but it, but hey, you know, the shows that definitely had an interesting turn. We 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 bring on Zach who does the Christian reviews, and we go right into sex toys. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> you, know, you, you you bring on someone who's a nice guy with a family and like in a life, and you were like, let's let's. Let's find the most depraved things that we can talk about. <laughs> yeah, and and I will admit this: the the Amazon one kind of came like like you know nearly last minute. Like she mm-hmm. sent it to me like yesterday. I'm like okay, mm-hmm. yeah. But Just yeah, say. yeah. I'm probably not going to be able to share this one on my site. <laughs> I'd recommend you. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. But you know, we we do have it we, on. You know what? We can give you some kind of like classy pseudonym to use. There you go. Like <laughs> ZL on the DL. Ooh, I like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But but uh no, it's 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 one of those weird things, I guess. I don't know why it turn it's it, it's it's just strange, but um cuz you have a different kind of mind than the rest of us. Yes, I do. <laughs> and that actually is going to lead into our shout outs for this week. Um Mondo Media if you haven't heard the name, you might have heard the name because I just started poking around on their stuff thanks to uh, Jess uh, showing me some of their uh, dick figure series. And I don't mean like figures of like drawn dicks or anything. I mean like stick figures being dicks to each other. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I mean there. <laughs> and I started poking around because I wanted to see more of that series. And I noticed uh, Mondo Media, if you just look on YouTube for Mondo Media, they have Dr. Tran. So I guess Dr. Tran? Yes. And it's like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so check them out. They're just look up Mondo Media on YouTube. They they have a lot of stuff on there. You can go through. It's like, holy shit, they have so much stuff. They have they have like, you know how you go to YouTube, you go to the playlist button, and then they have a little drop down that says what kind of playlists they have or what have you. Oh yeah, yeah. And they have it to where like they have uh, shows like A through E or whatever. They, they they have so many that they have to do that. And speaking of which, our you know the site's gonna have to do that. Oh God, Ugh. but but uh, yeah. So Mondo Media on YouTube, if you want to go check them out. Uh, do you have any Omega? Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, yes, actually I do. Um, I want to shout out to a YouTube artist called The Human Tim, and what he does is he does uh, metal guitar covers of some pretty famous pop culture songs. If you have seen the intro to my What Went Right video, that is his version of Reading Rainbow theme song called Reading Rainbow Rocks, which was used with permission. I asked him, and he said as long as I, in the credits, refer back to the original video, he's fine with it. But he does. He did a really great Christmas collaboration with uh, E-Rock113 and a few other metal artists on YouTube. So check his stuff out because he seems to really have fun with the music he creates. So. Sweet! And and I realize I'm kind of putting you on the spot here, Zach, but do you have any particular ones you want to shout out? Or, um, Well, I didn't really come prepared, so... Yeah. He always uh, says this. He's like, oh, the shout-outs. I'll be like, well... Yeah. But that's okay. I mean, if you don't have any, that's fine. We, we can... Yeah, I, no, yeah. Th- I can't think of anything off the top of my head. It's <laughs> okay. It's okay. You know, you know, Kat, whenever she's on, she usually doesn't have any either. <laughs> uh... But with that, let's go ahead and hit our news. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, and by the way, people people might be a little upset because we're actually recording this on a Thursday instead of the usual Sunday. Um, and it releases on Monday. So this has kind of been held on to for a few days. So if there's like something big that happens between the time we record and, and Monday and we didn't cover it, that's why. Probably the Scottish referendum. Yeah, because that's going on. I think they're voting on it today, aren't they? Yes, they're voting on it today. We should know by tomorrow. Yes, so by the time this episode goes up, we should know. <laughs> oh, but uh, other than – besides Scotland, we're going to go to Indiana. Hi, Indiana. How you doing? Oh, Indiana. Indiana police arrested Joseph Oberhansley, a convicted killer on parole, last week in connection to the killing of Tammy Jo Blanton, who was stabbed to death in her Jeffersonville home. Oberhansley reportedly admitted to police that he ate part of Blanton's brain, heart, and lungs after killing her. Dude, that's not how you zombie. That's, I mean, I, I read the, the story when you, when you sent it to us, but I was like, that's, that's not like, 
your average murder. That's not like I, I hated her, so I killed her. There's got to be a special kind of mental illness going on there. Yeah, and the thing, he's a convicted killer on parole. I, I'm sorry, if somebody is convicted of killing somebody, I would be very, very wary on letting them out on parole. Uh, at least I would. Well, I mean, it would depend on the circumstances. Like, yeah. If it was something like a self-defense murder, you know, I yeah. could see that. You know, but yeah, but that's uh, that, that's technically not murder. That's, that's well, no, no, but like killing. sometimes it's um, yeah, but it, they'll find it like like a negligent homicide or something like that. Yeah, but you know, we, you know, we're talking like actual murder. You know, it's it's like I don't like your face, stab. Murder yeah. with extreme prejudice. Yeah, and it's just. And he had been previously convicted for killing his 17-year-old girlfriend, shooting her mother near Salt Lake City in 98, and he was free on parole after serving a 13-year prison sentence. Didn't help. It didn't work. He, he killed again. It, didn't like, work. it makes me wonder if he had mental health issues to begin with or he developed them while he was inside, but – yeah. I mean, in all fairness, in most states, I don't think you, they can hold you after you served your time unless – you have committed further offenses, or you do pose a real credible threat to society. Yeah, although it says free on parole, which means that he probably, I'm guessing, probably had more than just the 13 years yeah, he's to like serve. Yeah, probation or something. Yeah, that's my guess. But still, I mean, and, and if he did have the mental illness, they didn't catch it. Nobody caught it. Well, in all fairness, it's, I mean, there's many, many articles about this, but the mental health system is bad enough as it is in this country. Well, I'm in, in your country now. <laughs> <Yeah. come> over <laughs> oh, but God, yeah. also the fact that, you know, even if you're, you committed a crime, like a horrible crime, and you are held basically indefinitely because of your mental health issues in a criminal psych psychiatric facility, they're basically warehouses. So I would have to, to believe that if he did have issues that were present, they were probably missed. But that's, again, not exactly fair to say, but yeah, that's – a life could have been saved. Yeah, very much so. And, that, and with that, we are going to say we need better health care, especially mental health care in this country. Yeah, you know, this country being the United States of America because that's right. Between the last time you were on and now, you moved. I did. You are all the way over in North – yeah, you're all the way over in Northern Ireland. We we have daylight over here, and, and it's it's still it's still daylight right now. I mean, it sun will go down in about an hour or so, but you know. Yeah. Uh, and you can actually catch Doctor Who when it airs, you know, <laughs> right there instead of us over here having to like go to certain <laughs> well, sites uh -huh. that stream the BBC. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so uh, Zach, you've been a little quiet. Do you have any uh, you have any thoughts on this? <laughs> um. Well, <laughs> yeah, not much more than what's already been said. Yeah, this is. Let's just say I, this wasn't quite the news story I was expecting to start off with when you when I saw the link in the Skype chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it sometimes the first news story it just sometimes it starts off like this. Sometimes it starts with something a little bit more. I probably should try and make a little bit more of an effort with my news stories. I will admit, you know, as far like, as rank them, sorry. rank them from like least like. Someone said something stupid one time in the Midwest to, oh my gosh, somebody ate someone's brain. <laughs> like, maybe if you built up to it. Possibly. Course, now, now I have that song, you know, all I want to do is eat your brain stuck in my head now. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, that video they did. There you go. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, but, but yeah, about the news stories, though. I make it. I do make it a point to try not to end on a on a supremely negative note. That dates all the way back to one of Holly's first shows. We went on break one time, and we had like this really really horrible news story. That during the break, she and Andrew Dickman just had to spend like the entire break just looking at cat videos just to cheer Oops. up. And it's like, yeah, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and and you know what? I am not afraid of screwing up and admitting it on this show, as you can obviously see. Okay. Uh, Unlike Kanye West. <laughs> oh, I heard about this. Yeah, I think everybody has heard about this. But uh, Kanye West seems to be upset at the flurry of negative press he's been receiving for demanding that a wheelchair-bound fan stand up during his gig last Friday in Sydney, Australia. TMZ has attained video of Kanye pausing in the middle of his popular song, Good Life, and said that he would not continue until every fan in the, arena, in the area was on their feet. Okay, number one, that, that's douchey in and of itself. 
What if somebody doesn't want to stand? What if, what if they feel like just sitting back and relaxing? He's got some issues. Yeah. He, he's, yeah. When he saw fans who remained seated, he then sent bodyguard Pascal Duv- Duvier? Duvier? Okay, I'll... That's so great. I am Pascal Duvier. Oh, to check that they were indeed wheelchair bound. This guy is serious. That because because obviously standing when Kanye tells you to stand is serious business, y'all. That that's all there is to it. While Kanye okay. meant well, the video was a bit hard to watch and will definitely make you feel sorry for the wheelchair bound fan who was booed by the crowd. I'm willing to bet that ninety percent of the crowd did not know better. Criticism directed at Kanye for the snafu came fast and furious, and apparently Yeezy has been feeling the heat. Yeezy? I, I, is that supposed to... I think that's his thing now. That's a... I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not really a Kanye West fan. Yeah. Last night in Brisbane, Australia, the 37-year-old rapper went on another one of his now infamous rants where he told the media to stop picking on him according to those in attendance. And this part right here makes me want to slap him. I'm a married Christian man with a family. Pick another target, West said. Right, because that absolves you from any kind of criticism, right? He seems to have forgotten about the sin of pride. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I fit that description, but I, I wouldn't demand people stand up when I'm singing. Or, you know, I'm doing this one. Not that I'm a musician anyway, but yeah, yeah that, that's not good for... Don't, don't, don't do that, man. That gives us all a bad name. <laughs> yeah. See, this this is the kind of thing that pisses me off when people use religion in this way, you know, or even in similar ways, whether it's Kanye West or, or in politics or what have you. They use this. They make people like, like Zach here and my own girlfriend look horrible. Stop it! And, and also the thing is, like, it's one thing if you're like a shopkeep somewhere and someone insults you and you're, you're saying, oh, but I am pious. But it's Kanye West. There's not a pious bone in his body. Yeah, no. He's a Holly. He was like he's a Hollywood celebrity. I mean, I, I mean, I know that there are you know the Hollywood celebrities that that do like live like you know chaste Christian lives and stuff like that. But I'm having a hard time believing that Kanye West is one of them. Yeah, no, I'm I'm sorry, just no. no if no. you're Kanye West, write the show. <laughs> okay, if he really does write into the show, I will be. Oh no. Well, I'm in another country. He can't get me here. So. Yeah. Well. Well, I don't know. I mean, he's able to get around the world. Yeah, well, I'll hide. He doesn't know what street I'm on. And he doesn't know what street I'm on either. <laughs> I mean, he can find out what city I'm in. I, I've I've mentioned my city on the show before, but he can't find the street I'm on. <laughs> and even if he did, I don't give a shit. By the way, by the way, Kanye West, if you are listening, that address you want to write into is artygomerprod at gmail dot com. Bring, it. bring it, because <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, speaking of my city. I live in Florida, and if you are drinking people, you need to take a shot. It's Florida. Take a shot. Yes. A special needs bus driver in Florida made an unscheduled stop Thursday. He wanted to pick up a prostitute, but instead drove into a police sting, according to reports. Rodriguez Machari, Machari, a Sarasota County area transit driver, was on duty when he monitored his empty when he motored his empty bus to North Tamiami Trail, where he attempted to negotiate a $20 sex act with what he thought was a prostitute. With, with, what he, with who he thought? That, that... I guess that just should be with whom, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so. Or no, because the noun, the noun is prostitute, which is a um, – even though it is a person, it is a non-proper noun. So I think they're correct. Okay. The bus driver pulled down to a dead-end street and parked the bus. Sarasota Police Sergeant Dimitri – Constanda Schlegelhofen told WL, WFLA. After waiting a couple of moments, seeing that the undercover officer wasn't going to come over to his vehicle, got out of the vehicle, out of the bus, and walked to the undercover officer. Uh, he was he was charged with procedure for prostitutes, solicited another for lewdness in the 9.30 a.m. sting, and released on a $120 cash bond. And he has been placed on administrative leave, and he is and they note that the driver has been with the county for five years and had a spotless record. Well, not anymore. So here's a question I had when I first read this story. Mm-hmm. Is he a bus driver of those who are special needs or is he special needs himself? Uh, this is Florida. It could be either way. Because it didn't make it clear. I know. But I was like, like I said, I was, it could be either way. <laughs> like I was thinking, okay, well, if he's special needs, but like, you know, very, very, very capable, like, 
Has anyone told him before that hiring a prostitute is wrong? Yeah, well, well not like wrong, it's like wrong, but I mean, yeah, that it's that he will get in trouble for doing so. Yeah, that's the first thing I wonder. But if he is just a bus driver for the special needs, well, then yeah, he's got no excuse really. Yeah, it's just, and plus, apparently, he, from the looks of it, he was on the job. You don't hire a prostitute while you're on the job, unless you're one of the Cock Brothers. Ugh. <laughs> Then, you know, then, well, they tend to try and get away with everything they can, and they need to stop getting away with everything that's really... I mean, like, unless your job was, like, executive prostitute hirer. Or... <laughs> uh, executive prostitute uh, hirer. Yeah, like, that was, like, if you worked for... No, I'm serious. Like, if you worked for a brothel and people, like, okay. people, well, yeah, came in with their resumes, they're like, I would like to join your brothel, please. And we'd be yeah. like, hmm, let's take a look at your resume here. Yeah, resume, give you an audition. <laughs> I want that job. I'm sure that I'm sure there's somebody out there like in Nevada that that does that. Yeah, Becky, we're moving to Nevada. We're we're doing that. We're going to Nevada. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna she's gonna get to this part. She's gonna message me. She'd be like, no, we're not. Well, I'm sure it's not a very exciting job because you probably have to call everybody and like check references and you know do all yeah. the HR paperwork. Well, yeah. Leave me to take the fun out of everything. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I mean, practical. But yeah, it's like God damn it, Florida. And, and and here here we here we go we we have the Christian review guy and I'm sla- <laughs> slapping out all these things. <laughs> no, no, note to self: ask for a bit more information before agreeing to do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I, I figure. Of course, I figure. You know, I've been on Lesbian Talk twice, so oh, it could be. We're, that we're nice. <laughs> we're yeah. nice. To you can. Do you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, and here I thought I, I was really pushing it by appearing on Lesbian Talk. Why? At least that one I could share. <laughs> yeah. Well, because I, I tell Zar, please don't insult our guests the first thing you do. You know, get some class. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I do want to say this on the air. I mean, if if it's if it's been like too uncomfortable up to this point, I do apologize. But you know, and and, and I want to put that out on the air because I don't I don't want to come off of like, oh, he brought him on here just to humiliate him. No, no, I didn't. <laughs> it's just you know. Okay. Okay. Another shot. Uh, Oh, 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 so, yeah, I, I was, I was you know, I, on the other hand, it wasn't like I was expecting this to be a Mr. Rogers show or anything like that. I, mean, I, I did listen to an episode or two before I agreed to do the, or no, actually, no, it was after the fact. But anyway, point remains, <laughs> I kind of had an idea of what I was getting into. But, yeah. Okay. So you didn't, so you did not come in here blind. That's good. That's very good. It makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> okay. Okay. I feel better now. So uh, we move, we move on to the other side of Florida, Fort Walt Beach. It's within driving distance of me. Well, reasonable driving distance. Because technically, L.A. is within driving distance. It's just not reasonable. Uh, Fort Walton Beach. A 60-year-old Fort Walton Beach man is charged with calling 911 eight times in two hours to complain that he had food but no refrigerator. Fort Walton Beach police officers were called to the Chestnut Avenue residence on September 5th, according to the, the arrest report. Richard Wilde had called 911 because he was upset he, he has food and not fridge. That's how it was written in the article. Journalism degree. Yes. Winning the world. Ah, uh, yes. He told the county operator that his phone only dialed 911, so he was going to keep calling, the report said. When the officers got to Wilde's apartment, he said he called 911 because he was upset that the property manager for his apartment had not installed a refrigerator in his unit. He said he was aware it was not an emergency, but defiantly, yeah, defiantly said he didn't care, according to the report. <laughs> said he would keep calling 911 until he received satisfaction with his complaint about the landlord. He admitted he knew it was a civil matter and the police couldn't do anything, the report said. Call logs show that he called 911 eight separate times between 12.45 p.m. and 2.20 p.m. And he admit, and it reiterates he admitted none of the calls were emergencies. It's like, he realizes this, but he calls it anyway. It's like, I, I have I've, to I've met confess. people like that. <laughs> yeah. I have to confess that, I, you know, these stories pop up a lot, and you'll see them on, on, on uh, Nash's show a lot, too. I love these stories because I, I, I just love the childlike concept that people think, you know, even though they're adults, they'll call 911. That's like the equivalent of, like, calling mom on you. Mm-hmm. Like, the police are liable to show up and be like, well, you give him his McNuggets or well, sh- you make sure she has a fridge. I mean, the nerve. Yeah. It just, I just love that it's so like, it's innocent and childlike, but at the same time, it's also very entitled. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. It was like, oh, God, there was like this one recorded phone call where like this one woman called 911 because of a taco or what have you. And there was like – and there was another one where another woman who sounded really eerily like one of my aunts. It wasn't her, but sounded like one of them over like a burger, a Burger King. And it's like, really? You're calling 911 over these things? Come on. I love it. Like what do they really honestly expect will happen? I, I don't know. I think the police they, officer will be like, well, tell you what. She'll be like, I know, right? It's like, what are they going to do? Go down and enforce the cheeseburger or something? I don't know. Enforce your fridge here, dude? I mean, well, It's like if you're, you know, in summer vacation and you're home with your siblings and, oh, I'm going to call mom. Mom, he, he took the last soda and she won't let me change the channel. And it, like, like, what outcome do you expect? I don't know. I mean, I'm around here. Kids, when the kids do that, they're usually told to shut up and go back and play. And That's exactly what my mother said. Would you stop that? Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean, and and Zach, I, I think you have you have kids, right? How how, how does I it do. work around your place? It, it's yeah. Well, they're still you know three and under. They haven't quite gotten to the point of oh, she won't let me, but they're getting there. So yeah, it's we're we're working on our strategy for that. <laughs> but oh, no, yeah. it's it's not gonna. We're not gonna tell them you know. Get, Okay, kids. If you're not getting your way, call nine one one. Yeah, that's not the way to do it. That's just no, no. Because no. keep because <laughs> if this keeps getting enforced, then you're gonna have people who call nine one one on their kids for looking at the Christmas presents early. Oh wait, that's happened. Uh, which is horrible. Yes, nine one one is not the auto win button. No, it's not like all of a sudden everything you said is automatically validated. That's not how that works exactly. No, it's not the insta win button, you know, and, and it's not the insta lose button either, technically, unless unless you're you're really horrible about it and, and really tying up phone lines like this guy. You know. Then 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 it's after a while it becomes insta lose. Yeah. I was gonna tie in a Godwin thing somewhere, but I don't think I could do it. So <laughs> I'm just gonna carl in it and go on to the next story. Oh dear. I heard about I heard about this guy. I've been hearing about him for months, even before this story. Just saying. Yeah. And I read this with Becky. Keep in mind, in, for for uh, context a little bit, uh, for those who didn't catch it earlier in previous shows, uh, Becky, my girlfriend, she is a Christian, and she and I were, you know, at, at first we looked at it, and we're like, what the, what the hell, what the fuck, and you know, we're about to get enraged at this guy, but then he just turns out to be kind of silly. So a New York pastor who believes that Jesus would have stoned LGBT people, no, he wouldn't said this week that the NASA Voyager spacecraft's journey through the solar system verified that homosexuality is perverted. I, because I, spaceships. Apparently. In a YouTube message to his followers posted over the weekend, Asilo World Missionary Church Reverend James David Manning said that gay Christians were misusing Bible verses to claim that God loved them. Yeah, like you don't misuse Bible verses yourself, sir? I'm pretty sure you do. Um, I'm, I'm just a guess. I'm just gonna guess here. Just saying. He's that he's that crazy guy out of Harlem that know. you know is called like he's in a predominantly black community. It is Harlem after all. Right. And said very disparaging things about other African Americans who don't happen to have the exact same beliefs as him. So he's been on everybody's radar for quite a while. Oh, okay. It makes you one. Okay, okay, I gotta do the preacher voice. I gotta do the preacher voice of this one. <clears throat> it makes you wonder about the legitimate place in the universe to think that somehow or another that we're no longer under those laws, he opined, adding that the earth and the sun would be destroyed before sodomy and the abominable practice of man lying with man was not a sin. Um, Wait, what? Yeah, I, 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 think okay. I think... The syntax of that confused me. Yeah, yeah well, part of it was not his quote. So, oh. but yeah, um, it technically, uh, you, it, you know, it's just you and your line of religious thinking that thinks it's a sin. Everybody else doesn't give a shit. Well, well, okay. I don't give a shit. Obviously Omega doesn't give a shit. Well, the, the thing is that <laughs> the thing is like folks like this and I, you see them and I used to call them strip mall churches mm -hmm. that, I mean, so don't don't get me wrong. Like any religion that someone believes in, obviously has the belief of their heart, and that's cool. Yeah. And some religions are older than others. Like you know, 
parts. Some Christianity goes back to like the Protestant Reformation and stuff like that. And, and that's cool. But then you see these ones, it's like they just looked up a whole bunch of nouns and then strung them together. And they're like the Church of the Inevitable All Night Day Review Jesus Loves You Fest. And you're like, oh, well, that's cool. So what are you like Methodist? You're Presbyterian? What's going on? They're like, oh, no, we're uh, we're Christian. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. And they're like, would you like to donate? And you're like, well, what are your missions? So like, do you, you know, do community outreach? Do you like feed the homeless? Uh, well, our pastor has a really big car. And you're oh. like, okay, okay, strip mall church. All right. Yeah, have fun with that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean that that's about as legitimate as as my religion, you know, of memorism, the worship of tits. <clears throat> and Gomer referred to the Book of Origins. Yes. <laughs> Oh, so and there's more from this guy. Any effeminate person will not enter the into the kingdom of God just for acting like a homo. I mean, you just act sweet. You ain't going to heaven, homie. Read it right there. Read it and weep. The entire universe rebukes sodomy. It rebukes same-sex marriage. It rebukes li man lying with man. Okay, number Every one. Every single supernova is against you. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Number two, cite your fucking source, dude. <laughs> like, the entire universe? Citation needed. Yes! It's like, hi! So far, we have not found any other intelligent life on any other planet. I don't think we found life on other planets yet. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I know that... Um, I, I did know this girl in college, the, what I was calling it the first time, who was an evangelical Christian, but she did believe that there was life in, on other planets. And I said, really? She's like, yeah, because there's a part in the Bible that says my father's house has many rooms. So those rooms could be like other worlds. So I was like, I guess that's true. I guess you could look at it that way. Yeah. That's so maybe like very... he thinks that aliens will. I, I don't know. Yeah. Actually, that's actually a really cool interpretation. I like that. <laughs> yeah, she was neat. She would do yeah. what this girl was. Uh, yeah, and and yeah, so far we've not found any. Doesn't mean there's not any out there. I mean, it's a big, it's a really big universe. So just, just... the aliens will show up. We wanted to come to Harlem and tell you you were right personally. Yeah, <laughs> and if they do that, then um, oh dear, uh, we're gonna have an inter intergalactic incident on our hands, and that's just gonna be all sorts of trouble. Unless they come from like the planet of the gay aliens, although I don't know how that would work exactly. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that. Oh God. Oh God, the 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 one movie Hogan reviewed. Which, oh right, the the gay niggers from outer space. No, I was thinking more of that's uh, what I was uh, thinking of. I was thinking of um, uh, Venus in space. That well, there you go. That too. Or Vegas in space. That was good. Either one. Was of more, the... That was more drag queens though. Yeah, but yeah. Oh lordy. And yes, oh, oh, and I know some somebody might be thinking, oh, wait, he, he used the, the title with the N-word? Yeah, because I'm not shying away from it, and I'm not using it in a racist context. Hi! Yeah, there was there was actually a 90s gay porn made called Gay N-Word from Outer Space, and yes, my wife did a review of it. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah. I, I will admit, before, before I'd even heard of your wife, before I'd even met her, I had heard about it from 2, like an old episode of 2 since like 2 and Jacoby were talking about it. Oh my gosh! And I went, I saw it, I downloaded it, and and I guess the version I got didn't have like the sex scene in it. But, yeah, the one that the one that she gave me did not as well. So yeah, but I watched it and I'm like, okay, weird, weird Danish people. Okay, I think it was Danish, but but it was somewhere in Europe. She she had me watch it to help uh, do some notes. So some of the jokes in there were mine, which makes me happy. But Yay. I was like, I'm not gonna retweet you if you use the actual word i'm gonna asterisk it out and she's like that's fair enough yeah yeah but yeah but basically that 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 my thing there is cover my own ass policy <laughs> yeah. oh but to continue on with with the pastor here manning said that the hubble space telescope and nasa's voyager spacecraft had looked into the universe and proved that everything has an opposite as far as our scientists have been able to discover everything has an opposite there's nothing in the universe that agrees with same-sex marriage. There's nothing in the universe that agrees with the sodomites. The sodomites can't get a witness from anywhere in the universe except their own perverted testimony. But... Nothing in the universe will agree with them. Everything in the universe says that it must be male and female. But... Really? Wait, what? Nothing in the universe is sentient. No. It's, uh, you know, until it's... we discover otherwise, it's... we're the only sentient beings in this universe. 
So I like, mean, of, of all of the things that he could have used, of all of the tracts of logic that, that that could have gone through, I mean, what did he want? Like, the stars to spell out yay, gay? I mean, <laughs> be, be like, the NASA's Curiosity rover, like, found a big dick dri- drawn on the sand and it wasn't drawn by it? I mean, what, what does, I mean... I don't know. Well, well, if there is a big dick drawn on the sand somewhere, like on Mars or something. No, this happened. This happened accidentally. Well, they were driving Curiosity around, and apparently, <laughs> from one of the angles of Curiosity's camera, looking back on its own track, you could kind of make it out. But NASA swore that it was a coincidence. Sure, it was. That's what Twitter said. <laughs> yeah, and we and we all know Twitter is the bastion of honesty and 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 goodness, right? Mm. Well, no, 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 no. I mean, like that's what they tweeted out. Oh. The, there's because oh, okay. I follow the, the Curiosity Twitter, and so everyone was like, "Yeah, uh huh, sure." Yeah, he did it on purpose. I know it. Oh, and and there's still more. Yeah, we're we're spending a lot of time on this one because there's just so much. Uh, the pastor then explained that demons were convincing LGBT people that homosexuality was normal, which triggered a rant about how life was not created in the rectum. <laughs> what? Oh no! <laughs> in the beginning, in the butt. <laughs> like how I, 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 okay I see where he's going I see where he's going that he's saying that that conception does not take place there which is correct but it wouldn't take place there even if it was a woman because that's not how our parts work honey maybe does someone need to explain this to the good pastor maybe that's why he's so upset maybe. has he been doing it wrong this whole time oh god no wonder no wonder he, oh, no wonder your wife's not bearing fruit you're nailing her in the wrong hole asshole that's not where that goes well, at least not if you want yeah. to do, well, at least not if you want to do that. There you go. Oh, that was... like, oh my gosh, I have to tell you this. So, I uh, a few weeks ago I was in the waiting room of a hospital waiting for someone, and it was oh my god, o'clock in the morning, and so they had the TV on. It was in Baltimore, and they had this one pastor who wanted you to send him two, a two thousand dollar seed. So his people in the prayer call center will, will pray for you to get money. And I was like, yeah, right. So he starts going on about how he and his wife tried for so many years to have children, and it never happened. And then he paid some other guy a whole bunch of money, and then and then she got pregnant. And I was thinking to myself, dude, if you've been doing it wrong for 10 years, <laughs> you don't need the Lord. <laughs> you just need, like, a an anatomy textbook or something. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. And, and here, here, here's what he's got to say about it. There is no life that will come out of a rectum, he exclaimed. You cannot produce life. It's only death. There's nothing in a rectum except waste, refuse, and death. Okay, I take issue with death. I, 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 yeah, I if, mean, you've got, if you've got death coming out of your personal rectum, you need to call somebody. I mean, yeah. you need to call the AMA or the Lancet or somebody because you're going to be famous, my friend. Oh Thanks. yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. I've I've had farts that you know would make George Carlin think they would kill cancer from across the street, but not really death. No, no. I mean, I I understand that he's trying to speak in a in a, in a hyperbolous way, and that this is how you know a lot of fiery folks speak and stuff like that. But I wonder if they think about later how many people are going to go back and be like, "Really, you said that?" Yeah. Oh, lordy. Uh, and he continues on, and without the true authentic creation that God has put in order, all sodomites would die, because there's nothing but death and refuse in the rectum. No life can come out of the rectum. The rectum is designed to get rid of death and waste. It is designed for that one purpose, and the sodomites are cheering on and praising the rectum. I mean, that's demonic. Does Praise he not... ye to the rectum. Does he not know how lesbian sex works? I oh. guess he doesn't, because we don't do oh. that. I mean, I guess you can if you wanted to, but we don't do that at all. No. I, I think mean... some people are just so fixated on one aspect of a, a, a gay male sexual relationship that, I mean, you know, he he missed he missed a big chance here. He could have he could have said that lesbians are like misusing their well, not really vagina, because that's not really how that works. Well, anyway, he could have he could have taken that in a whole different way, and he missed his opportunity. Yeah, just wow, he he fails, and there's still more fail, and, and a little bit of a little bit of rage with the fail, uh, and a little bit of logic to offset the rage too. 
In the end, Manning said that his followers should understand that LGBT people were filled with demons. He advised that it was possible for gay men and lesbian women to be saved by Jesus. Well, you know, yeah. If you want to look at it that way, yeah. I, well, I'm... technically anybody can be saved because all yeah. they have to do is, is be like, do you believe in Jesus? Is he your savior? All right, saved. So technically yeah. that's correct. Technically anyone can. Yeah, and, and, and we are correct, right, Zach? Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, he's been he's been sitting here quiet, probably like, like shaking his head, I, like oh, I'm, God, I'm gathering my thoughts. I'll, I'll, I'll okay. talk later. But yeah, I'm okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, because uh, I'm just I'm just imagining him sitting there, like oh God, this guy represents me. Oh, I don't want him to. But uh, this will this will make that happen even more now. However, you cannot allow anyone who is a transgender to come into the church. He warned. Anyone who's cut off the genitals cannot enter into the house of God, so you can't even pray for them. Maybe oh, no, uh, that's them. not what Pat Robertson said. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did, like, about uh, almost a year ago. Some person called up his show and was like, uh, my relative is, is transgender, is that okay? And he's like, yeah, it's probably fine. Yeah. See, Pat Robertson nowadays is like, over the years, he said some really stupid wall-banging bullshit. But he, then he has he's, moments like this. He's old, <laughs> you yeah. know. Okay, so so let's see. Maybe you can take them out on the street and pray for them that they get rid of the demons that are in them. The entire universe condemns sodomy, same-sex marriage, and the practices thereof. I'm James Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. And by the way, the, his justification for the no transgender thing, anyone who's cut off their genitals cannot enter the house of God. What about boys, you know, baby boys or grown men that have had circumcisions? You know, because that's technically... Maybe. Maybe Nothing is that else. because it's a Jewish thing? I know that like some some evangelical um, Christian sects really don't like any of the Old Testament stuff, and some do. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, but see, I mean, like me, I was I was circumcised when I was a baby, and I I grew up Christian. So by his logic, would I have not been able to get into heaven anyway because part of my dick was cut off? Well, I think maybe it depends on how much. Maybe, but he doesn't say here. And then that's the thing. So it's like, and, and and if that's and if that's the logic he's going with, if if he counts circumcision in this, then he better not be circumcised. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> you really call it? Excuse me, sir. I'd like to see your penis. <laughs> you have a few questions? Oh, would well, like to oblige us here? Yeah. Uh, and so... if this is not recommended. No, please do no. not do that. No. I'm not endorsing this option at all. I am not either. Okay, so Zach, you said you were gathering your thoughts. Let's hear them, dude. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, my head's pretty much been on my desk the entire time I've been listening to oh, no. the story. This you look, it's uh... like, Daddy, what's wrong? You're like, I'll tell you later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you're 25. Yeah. So. Mm, yeah. Um, no. Needless to say, I do not agree with his approach. I do not agree with the, with all of his what he has to say. Yeah. Um. Yeah, especially that last bit that you can't even pray for someone, can't let them come to the house of God. No. One, the church buildings we have are not the houses of God. Um, the Bible's very clear that when because Christians are, you know, the, the church is not buildings, the church is the people. Right. Uh, um, and we, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes behind dwells us, when we accept Christ as our Savior, then yes, we become the temple of God. So, to call, I always cringe when I hate people refer to their church buildings as the house of God because that's not going to be accurate. Um, and to say, the fact they contradict themselves, so you can't even pray for them, but then maybe you can take them out into the street and pray for them. Okay, yeah, I don't think he was listening to himself when he was talking there. No. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, nowhere does the Bible ever say we cannot pray for people. And it is, yes, everyone can be saved. Um, for you know, as long as there is repentance and acceptance of Christ, of what Christ did for us on the cross and saving us from our sins, etc., that then yeah, anyone can be saved. Um, do I agree with what he was saying? Uh, no, I don't agree with his method of his message at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I do believe that homosexuality is a sin. I also believe lying is a sin. It, it's one of the things that just because you believe someone is living in sin or has sinned, you don't treat them like crap. Right. Well, that's really good because Zara and I want to, I mean, because Hagen and I want to uh, come to Colorado at some point. And she said, oh, we should we should visit Dak and, you know, see if he's up for lunch or something like that. And if he's like, oh, what brings you to Colorado? We'll be like, not sinning. We're oh. not totally not sitting any kind of way here in Colorado where some sins are legal. So don't 
think that we're sinning. Actually, we came to look at the mountains. They're beautiful, <laughs> but no sins. Just saying. Well, yeah, like I said, let me put this by me. I, I'm t- I, I, I've been on Let's Me Talk twice, so <laughs> obviously I don't shun you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I mean, that, you know, and I don't. I, I agree with the lifestyle. I don't. But also, you know, I don't cuss. I don't kill people. I try not to lie. <laughs> it's a I good thing you don't kill people. So yeah. it's one. Of, I know it's one of those things that you know. Uh, sin is sin is sin, and with the same consequence. I don't. The Bible doesn't teach. I don't believe the Bible teaches that there are levels of sin. It, it says. The only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, and most people don't even know. We can't even agree on what that even means. So, yeah. you know. Or if you're as, Catholic, there's a whole bunch of rules. Right. Oh but yeah. I'm I'm not Catholic, and I won't go there. <laughs> well, because no, uh, Hagen was Hagen was playing the Dante's Inferno on Xbox, and uh, you have an op like apparently throughout the game you can meet some of the quote unquote famous souls that Dante actually mentioned. You can choose if you want to, just I guess destroy them or you can redeem them and then you have to play a little mini game to redeem them but so somebody was accused of doing i can't even remember what it was but it was some like really simple thing and i was like is that really a sin and she's like what i was like i think that might be a venial sin at best and she goes oh well, what's the difference i said well if you die with a mortal sin, according to the catholics anyway if you die with a mortal sin on your soul it's go directly to hell do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars that's it that's the end of the game you have to stay there until the end of times when you might be redeemed maybe but if you die with a venial soul on your sin, like even if it's a whole bunch of venial souls, as long as it's not a mortal sin, then you have to go to purgatory. And then eventually, like it'll take an extremely long time, but you could work them off and then you can go to heaven. You don't have to wait until the end of times. But by then she was killing the boss, so she'd moved on. Yeah. I just, I just, and didn't the Catholics at one point, or at least one of the popes say that purgatory no longer existed? No, that's limbo. Okay, limbo. The, that's right. Where the unbaptized babies go, which I thought I thought wasn't fair anyway, you know, because you're like, like, it, I mean, if you're an unbaptized baby, I'm guessing it's either because you have died in the first few days of life. I mean, back when everybody was Catholic, yeah. you died in the first few days of life and could not be baptized. In which case, I and I told when I had my whole Catholic learnings, and I said to Father Joe, I'm like, that's not fair, and he's like, yes, but. The unborn babies are just in limbo, and I'm like, well, I think they should be given a free pass. Yeah, I, I I can agree with that. But but yeah, I think I think it was John Paul, it was either John Paul or uh, Ratzinger who decided that we don't have limbo anymore. So I guess all those babies went to heaven. I'm not sure. Yeah, probably well, have to Google. It. We don't know. Oh, so our last one is just is, the last one's definitely going to be more on the silly thing, kind of gross, silly. Um, I want to say Becky actually sent this to me because she knew I would put it in the show. Is either this one or one of the other ones before it? But um, an 18-year-old pizza store employee in Texas has been charged with a felony after police say he rubbed his genitals on food he was preparing for a customer. I say, well, good. He should be. Yes. Because he could be. He could have transmitted anything. Yes. The Georgetown Police Department arrested Austin Simmons last week and charged him with tampering with a consumer product. A Papa Murphy's customer who ordered food on September 2nd told police he caught Simmons. Police said Simmons admitted that he would give would have given the pizza to the customer if he hadn't been caught. A store employee told Austin American Statesman that Simmons had been fired. He was released from the Williamson County Jail after posting $10,000 bond, and online rail jail records didn't indicate an attorney. What I want to know is why. Was it, was I... it just... Being, I, no I saw an article on uh, another article about this story, mm-hmm. and the it it said why. Uh, basically, the customer came in right before close, so uh, he was a little pissed off, and so it was kind of revenge there. Uh, I can yeah. I can understand that because I've been in that customer service situation where you're about to close down, like especially in cafe, and someone's like, oh oh, I want a pizza, and I want this, I want five frappuccinos, and I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, those but, kinds of people. It's like, oh god. But, but here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I think Zach will appreciate this story. I, I, I used to be that way because I used to be when I worked in the DC store. This woman, and I called her Frap Lady, and she would always call because we were open nine or eleven every day at like ten fifty, on Saturdays and Sundays. And she would call the cafe and put in her order and say, I'll be there really quick. I'm almost there. And she'd come in sometimes, like you know, five minutes after close, just running in get the frap. And the first time I was like, oh, brr, brr, how dare she? Oh, I'm so angry. And and she was like, oh, thanks, honey. And she tipped us both a dollar. 
And we don't solicit for tips at my store. So that was again, a major thing. And what I'd come to find out from knowing her, because she would do this every weekend, was that she had this insane government job during the week. And then she worked an additional part-time job that she only got off that late at night. And one time around Christmas, she came in and she just got to chatting with uh, with me and the other person in cafe. Come to find out that her husband, I think I think it was either vascular dementia or early on, onset Alzheimer's that he she was his caretaker for, and that her daughter had a significant mental illness and was refusing to be medicated. So she was also her daughter's primary caretaker, and like she was a lovely lady. She always tipped, and I I miss her so much. But I felt I still feel so bad for judging her. And, but then here she was this person that, that was just her circumstance. So I can kind of see where the guy's coming from at the same time, you know. Yeah, you can see both you sides can. of the argument. Yeah. yeah. And even if you're pissed off, you know what? Bitch about it on social media when you get home. Bitch about it to your coworkers. Yeah. <sighs> don't, don't, don't be nasty like that. Don't yeah. Be, yeah, don't be a dick. <laughs> literally. Like he could have not even an STD or, or something like that. You could just have regular old bacteria down there that you don't want to get anywhere. Yeah, I mean, just, just no. We, we, you know, okay, it was, this is this is a, uh, what was it, pizza place, I think it was, mm-hmm. maybe? Yeah, you know, that's not the kind of cheese you want on your pizza. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, now that I've grossed out everybody. <laughs> oh. Now that everybody in the audience is grossed out, including... Good night, everybody. Yes. yes. <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. But... We're here all week, tip your server. Yes, do tip your servers, please. Otherwise, if you don't tip them enough and you're a great asshole to them, you might get shamed on social media, like this, like this one that's been going around on Facebook. <laughs> What's the newest one? Is this one that I haven't seen yet? Uh, it was a guy that was like at a bar. He he groped one of the bartenders or whatever, and he ended up tipping her like exactly two dollars over after a bill that was supposed to have been a little higher with the tip because of. You know, oh, that's not how you do it. It's it's a dollar per te- a dollar per drink. Yeah, but um. But at any rate, at any rate, he tipped poorly and groped her and everything, and she wrote this long letter to him and said, yeah, just by looking at publicly available information, she found out who he is, who he works for, outed all of that, which uh, – well, well, here's the thing. If he, if, he, so. if he groped her, that I think that technically is sexual harassment. Yeah, just And so I, depending on what the bar's policy is, like some bars will throw people out for that. Some people won't. Yeah. But technically, he did commit a misdemeanor. Yeah, which I, I hope he does get in trouble for that because, no, you don't grope your bartenders unless they invite you to grope them. You know, un- unless it's okay with the bartender. What request. bars do you go to? <laughs> yeah, you could know the bartender. Okay, all right, you know, fair enough. You know, you fair could enough. know the bartender. Or they could just be that over and say, hey, you know what? You like these? Give them a squeeze. You know. But I would be so embarrassed. I'd be like, uh, I have to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I... I Admittedly, as, as much of a, a sexual fiend as I am, I don't think I could honestly do it to a stranger. Yeah, that would be so awkward. I'd be like, oh, that's okay. I mean, they're, they're very perky, but I just, you know, I, I, you know what? I have, uh, I'm paralyzed, yeah. actually. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yeah, let's have a few drinks first and get to know each other, then we do that. Oh, but, but yeah, seriously, I've, and, and, you know, going, going back to the actual story, you know, in the, at, at the, you know, at, at the person for coming in at close, I've been there. What did I do? I just served them. That's all I did. Yeah. I served them, got them the hell out of the store, and closed quickly. And, and this would be an especially, especially unfortunate story. I mean, it would actually almost make me feel a little bit better to know that the customer came in and there was a real jerk about it. But especially if they didn't, if they're like, hey, can I have a pizza? That's that's just even worse. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. yeah. Pull it together. You know what I mean? And hey, you never know. That customer you're treating unfairly at closing it could be that same lady that Omega yeah. talked about. So, you know, I mean, just saying. Uh, but with that, we're going to go ahead and get out of here for this week. Uh, Zach, thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> as, as awkward as it may have been. Traumatized. <laughs> Oh poor guy! It's like it's like spend half the show in silence, and it's like, oh god, did I like did I like do the thing? And then you have to like go watch Veggie Tales with your kids and hug them close just to like <laughs> like detox. Yeah. To worry, kids actually, gonna be okay. I, I, actually, I'll be going and work and editing my footage for my crossover with the Amanda Hug. Oh, well, there you so. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole night for you, and it. Oh my! Oh boy! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You you've done you got. Hagen, I think you, I think your uh, End Times, Revenge of the End Times movie review also has Hagen in it, and also has uh, yep. uh, Namio, who not only has Hagen, her own show, Namio and uh, 
comic strip critic. Well, oh yeah. Had appearances in in my yeah my season finale, which I'm I'm still uploading my my backlog to of episodes to the site. I think the Revenge of the End Times movies will be coming up here in the next week or two. I think I have that queued up for yeah. So. I think I, I can see it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's obviously I take a look at things because I'm having yeah. to upload my own stuff. But I think according to that, how you got it scheduled, I think it's supposed to be in October, like early early October, because okay. you've got a lot of stuff going up. And it's like yes. it's like if, if people have been paying attention, he's been having things go up like at least one a day. He, he's chunking yeah. them out there, and that's pretty. And I, and I like it. That's that's awesome. Oh um, uh, yeah, I'm coming up on let's see, I think it's seventy episodes I've done so far. Wow. <laughs> I, wow. By the end of next year, uh, I, I, if I can stick to my schedule, I'll, I'll hit 100 episodes. Sweet. I'm to do, it, do weekly. That's what I try. It helps, you know, having doing short episodes, <laughs> so yeah. uh, five minute or five minutes or less or thereabouts. Is, it, it helps with getting things okay. out there on a regular yeah. basis. <laughs> yeah, short, sweet, to the point, and 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 honestly, I, you know, well, obviously you got picked up because I like your stuff. There was like yeah. one review I kind of disagreed with because you did Second Glance and Namio and I were actually uh, talking about doing a crossover with that one. Mm. I wasn't a fan of it, mm. but but you know, and I know you like it. You you like it, and that's pretty cool. But you know, it, it's it's just one of those things where it's like we can di- agree to disagree, yeah. or, and you know, hey, and who knows? Maybe if Namio and I get up off our asses and do it, maybe we'll have that crossover. <laughs> and yes, I'm saying it on here. Maybe Namio will hear, and it will kick our asses into gear again. Uh, like I need to, because I got something for my patrons I need to do. Uh, uh, I do get it. A... Do it yes. now. Well, yeah. And I keep saying recording space, but I think I know how I'm gonna come. Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. <laughs> I mean, what? What? Yes. Okay. So with that, with all of the with all of that out of the way, uh, we're gonna head out of here. Uh, Zach, again, thank you for being on the show this week. It was awesome having you. If thank we you wanted, and if we want to find you on the social media, where could we find you? I'm on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook is uh, Indie Christian Review. Uh, that's Indie with a Y, just because it makes for a shorter Twitter handle. Speaking of Twitter handle, it's uh, it's at Indie Christian Review. But that's I N D Y. I'm gonna have to shorten it so C H O. See if I can remember now. C H R S T N R E V U. Just look, look, look me up on Twitter. You'll find me. Just any Christian review, it'll be up there mm-hmm. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I include the links at the end of all of my videos, so that's probably the quickest way. Watch one of my videos on the site, and you'll find the links there. And I'm also on Patreon as well. Patreon.com/storyteller. Yes. Storyteller yeah. being the, the, the character I've persona I've since adopted on the show. So yes, throw money at him. He does good stuff. Uh, and Omega, where can we find you? Oh, you know me. I'm on the Twitters at the Omega Geek. You can find me on blip.tv slash the Omega. I've got a dot com. I occasionally do things for Nerdvice, although I should really do another one soon. You can find me on Artie Gilmer Prods, and you can find my podcast with my lovely lady wife, Lesbian Talk. And that is on um, Artie Gilmer Prods and That Guy with the Glasses. Yes. Yay! <laughs> and, okay, here's mine. Prepare for rambling. <laughs> <laughs> Behold the litany of Gomer. Yes, the litany of Gomer, who can be found on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. And if you find me on Twitter, you can easily find me on Facebook, because that is my real name on my Twitter. Uh, if you want to find me there, uh, you can find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com, both of which have their own Facebook pages. Just look them up, like them, and, and throw feedback at us. We really, really love it. I, I, I really love the feedback. I, I, I take it and I savor it with, with a nice white sauce. Um, so yeah, well, not that white sauce. No. No, I'm liking like thinking like like you know the southern like white gravy. Yeah, it's got no. a lot of fat in it. Savor it with like turkey gravy instead. Well, there it's you go. Fat. Uh, I still can't tell now if I'm hungry or just disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> white white gravy is white gravy is nasty. Yeah. It's so it's so fattening. Okay, so instead of white gravy, white wine. Yes. There we go. There you go. That works. <laughs> go with that. So um. So yeah, and of course uh, the site itself, you know, my site RT Gomer Productions does have its own Tumblr. I believe it is rtgomerprod.tumblr.com, or just look up RT Gomer Productions. You can find it on there as well. Uh, this show also has its own Tumblr. Uh, just look up Thespian Talk on Tumblr. You'll find it. Uh, I try to keep. I'm trying to keep it more updated now that I'm getting it out there. Links to all of the uh, relevant site stuff is below, and you'll also notice that we do have a GoFundMe drive going for extra space for the site because we're running out and 
and uh, I and a few other producers that are needing space for videos and audio files and everything, we kind of need it. <laughs> and and the more money we can raise up for it, the better we can, the better we'll do. That link is also going to be below. Uh, if you're listening to this on uh, either of the sites or on YouTube or what have you, um, if you want to take it on the go, we do have. We do have the show on iTunes. Just look up Thespian Talk on iTunes, and there you go, which that link should also be below if you're listening to this on Nerdvice or on uh, YouTube. And if you want to help support my shows, the site, and ev other things on a more regular basis, uh, I also have my own Patreon, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Even just as little as a dollar per production will go a long way. Um, and also, I would be remiss if I did not mention my girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who also has her own Patreon page, patreon.com slash beckyhop. She also has links to her own personal site and her DeviantArt account. She does some amazing artwork. She's done some title card artwork for me. She's done some for Steve McCool, like we mentioned last week. And, you know, she also does animation. You, In fact, if you throw enough money at her through Patreon, she'll do a 30-second animation for you. And, by the way, she's an award-winning animator. Did I mention that? She is. <laughs> Because she's awesome, and she's my girlfriend, and I love her. Mwah. Yes, now everybody is all sappy and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and now that everybody has diabetes, again, thank you guys for listening. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the Omega and Zach Lawrence signing off. Bye-bye. Right. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.